Police put out a neighborhood crime alert after a rash of car break-ins. Officers say Raymond Talbert admitted smashing windows and stealing from six cars on Sunday. The cars were parked at an apartment complex on Riddle Road and University Heights. Angela Ingram spoke with one of the victims who is now taking some extra precautions. Angela? Rob Talbert is already out of jail and police want to make sure that if he does come back to this neighborhood, the people here know what he looks like. One of the victims tells me that his car has been broken into twice in the past two weeks, but this time people called police quickly and officers arrested a suspect within minutes. Police say Raymond Talbert was busy early Sunday morning, breaking into cars before the sun came up. The smaller passenger side windows of six cars are gone. Isaac Howard says he realized a thief was rummaging around in his Camry when a neighbor called him. The person went inside that red car, left out. My car was, was parked over there. And he was currently in mine. So my neighbor woke me up and told me that the person was in my car. People called. Police were up there. We arrested a subject. He broke into six cars a minute to it. So um, I'm really happy about that. I want to get his picture out there. Isaac didn't have much in his car, just a couple of bucks, some mouthwash and cologne, which police say Talbert stole. From the other five cars, he had stolen their phones and um, GPS devices. So, but in my car, I never leave nothing visibly out to see. Officers are constantly warning drivers not to leave anything in their vehicles. They've been leaving report cards on cars, letting people know whether their valuables can easily be seen by a thief. And even the smallest amount of money can be a temptation. They'll break your $250 window for 50 cents. And tomorrow, officers will be out in Clifton Heights, University Heights, and also Fairview with Talbert's picture so that they make people aware of who he is and what's been going on in the neighborhood. They plan to go to different apartment buildings and post information about car break-ins as well. Reporting live tonight from University Heights, Angela Ingram, Local 12 News. Rob, back to you. Angela, thanks very much. Raymond Talbert is charged with theft and possessing criminal tools. His next court date is February 15th. Well, winter's back, and Tim tells me it will be a chilly start to the morning. With what to expect on the way to the school bus stop and work, here's Tim now with no wait weather. Yeah, we're already down into the mid-20s. I think we'll bottom out near 21 degrees tomorrow morning. Take a look at satellite and radar data. Still a few clouds out there, but they have thinned and they have broken up quite a bit over the course of the last six hours. Nothing to report on live Precision Doppler 12 HD. There could be a flurry, I guess, down in Adams County, but that has been about it. Almost all the precipitation has been well southeast of Cincinnati. Milford has 25, Lunkin at 26. The airport has 25. Chile in southeastern Indiana, where Laurel has 23. And Brookville, Indiana, and Franklin County checks in at 23. A northerly component to our wind right now. Winds light, however, between 3 and 6 miles per hour. On our way down to 21 degrees, I think you'll start with a mix of sun and clouds tomorrow. More clouds late tomorrow afternoon. Slight chance of a sprinkle or a flurry tomorrow night. We'll detail that and take you through the next seven days. Coming up in just a bit. Now back to the news desk. Robin Kim. All right, Tim, thanks. New tonight, a Mason man is indicted for a crime the prosecutor's office considers one of the most brutal sexual assaults in Warren County. The Warren County Grand Jury indicted 42-year-old William O'Leary on rape, sexual battery, and felonious assault charges. Investigators say O'Leary sexually assaulted the woman in July. He's also accused of beating her during the attack. Ryan Widmer's appeal for a fourth trial is denied. Today, the Ohio 12th District Court of Appeals upheld a lower court's decision. Widmer's attorney argued the investigation was tainted because the lead detective falsified his employment records. But in a unanimous vote, the judges ruled that even if Jeff Braley lied about his credentials, it did not impact the case. Widmer serving 15 years to life in prison for killing his wife, Sarah, in the couple's bathtub in 2008. New information tonight about the arrest of Senator Rand Paul's son. William Paul is accused of assaulting a flight attendant. The alleged assault led to his arrest at the Charlotte Douglas International Airport on January 5th. 19-year-old Paul is also accused of underage drinking and disorderly conduct. Police are not saying if the assault happened during the flight or once the plane landed in Charlotte. 
Secretary of State Hillary Clinton will testify about the deadly attack on the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi after all. Mrs. Clinton is scheduled to testify before the House Foreign Affairs Committee on January 23rd. She will answer questions about the September 11th attack that killed four Americans, including U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens. There are still a lot of questions about security at the embassy before the attack and misinformation given to the public after the attack. Mrs. Clinton was supposed to testify last month, but it was canceled after she fell and suffered a concussion. Another battle is brewing in Washington, and this time it's over the debt ceiling. President Obama says Congress must raise the debt ceiling or risk hurting the economy. So while I'm willing to compromise and find common ground over how to reduce our deficits, America cannot afford another debate with this Congress about whether or not they should pay the bills they've already racked up. The president says if the debt ceiling is not raised, Social Security checks, veterans' benefits will be delayed. Republicans are against raising the debt limit without imposing spending cuts. And House Speaker John Boehner released a statement shortly after the president's press conference. A portion of it reads, The American people do not support raising the debt ceiling without reducing government spending at the same time. The consequences of failing to increase the debt ceiling are real, but so too are the consequences of allowing our spending problem to go unresolved. So do you think Congress will raise the debt ceiling and avoid a government shutdown? To vote in our Local 12 News poll, 345-1212 or local12.com. We'll have final results for you just a bit later in the broadcast. Stealing identities and then stealing millions. Details about the elaborate scheme next. And Lance Armstrong's fall from grace ends with an interview with Oprah. If your student gets an A, his teacher may soon get a bonus. Why some teachers don't want it. That's coming up on Local 12 News tonight.